Greetings from the National Library. My name is Mervin, and I'll be conducting this e-lecture on academic research using the NLB e-resources. For your information, all of the content covered inside this presentation will be available inside the Shure Research Guide, which can be downloaded from the link over here. This lecture is broken up into two parts. Part one will cover general online research tips, and part two will be using the NLBE resources, and I'll be introducing everyone to three very useful ones for the purposes of school research. So how do we do research effectively? Now, most of the time, people will just say, I will just use a search engine like Google. Well, it sounds easier than it is, because the problem that students face today with search engines is that we become over-reliant on them, and as a result, there are a lot of people that are just copy and pasting a lot of content on the internet and using them for their schoolwork. Now, of course, at your level of study, everyone knows that copy and pasting from the internet is pretty much plagiarism. So please don't do that. If not, you may get penalized or even get your entire assignment rejected because of that. So besides problem of plagiarism, we also want to address one of the key concerns is that living in today's internet age, you get so many search results. But how much time do you actually spend into analyzing them? Now, in order to make research easier, it is better to rely on official web domains. In this case, we recommend education, government, or organization websites, namely edu, gov, or org domains. Now, the question that most people ask is, can I actually get my search engine to limit my searches to these specific web domains? The answer is yes, and let's go into a little bit of a demonstration. Okay, now we have our browser open. We're gonna demonstrate how to make your online searching more efficient. So we are going to use a sample search topic of aging population, for example. And you can see the problem. You have 134 million results in just 0.55 seconds. And unfortunately, out of so many results, you know, we only end up using maybe one to three good ones. So in order to make sure that everyone gets credible sources, I'm gonna teach everyone what we call a search command, which I personally use, and the most useful one I find is the site command. By typing in the site command, make sure you key in S-I-T-E followed by a colon, and then you decide which particular web domain you want to limit your search results to. In this case, maybe I want to find out statistics about the aging population in Singapore, and maybe I will choose the gov.sg domain, okay, as my choice. And once I press enter, you will see that my results have dropped down a whole lot more from 133 million into just 10,000. And if you observe all of the results, they all actually come from gov.sg domains. In other words, using the site command allows you to actually narrow your search to a very sizable and manageable number. And all of them are actually official domains, making things a lot easier for both yourself and your teacher. Now you can also change your web domains at any time. I can switch it to edu.sg. And now I have results coming from all the major academic institutions as well as universities in Singapore with the topic of aging population inside the website. Now in addition, your lecturers or teachers may ask you to find some recent news articles about your topic, for example, you know, just for some case studies. And in that case, you can also use the site command to limit it to a specified media agency of your choice or news agency. It could be BBC, The Straits Times, Channel News Asia, as long as you know the website of the news agency. So in this case, I'm going to type in channelnewsasia.com. All right, so same thing goes for the other website, straightstimes.com, bbc.com works the same way. And after I press enter, you can see that all my results are only from Channel News Asia articles with aging population inside either the title or the content itself. You can even see some videos here as well, some documentaries perhaps, and these can be very useful in adding on to your research materials. Now we're going to move on to part two of our lecture, which will cover the National Library's e-resources. Now, do keep in mind that you need to log in to the website. 
And the website that we're going to introduce everyone to is the eResources website, which is on eresources.nlb.gov.sg. Now, in order to set up your My Library ID account, you just need to click on the login button at the top right hand corner. For those students who already have your library ID set up, half the battle is already won. Now, for those of you who may have not set up your library ID, not to worry. Go on to page 25, which is the annex page of your Shure Research Guide, and you will find the step-by-step -step screenshot instructions on how to set up your account. After you have logged in to the NLB eResources website, one general rule of thumb is to browse all the different title databases by A to Z. So in this case, you can see on the left-hand side of the website, there's a Browse by A to Z option. Just click on it and you will see a bar appear. We will then select our preferred databases based on their title. The next database we're going to introduce is called ProQuest Central, one of my favorites. It is a full-fledged academic database containing thesis papers, journals, newspapers, trade publications, you name it. Now, for students, this is extremely useful. If you cannot find certain articles or journals that are conventionally found on the open internet, this is where you can find the premium materials where academics actually upload their studies into such a database. In order to access ProQuest, same thing, I'm actually under P of the browsing categories. You will see that there are a lot of different ProQuest entries, but please click on ProQuest Central number 12 now, once you're in ProQuest, you will see a single search bar in the middle. Looks really familiar. Simply type in your research topic of your choice. We're going to use aging population again as our example. And this is when I need to inform everyone that an academic database works a little bit differently from your regular search engines out there. Now, you can actually type in more search commands, all right, in order to expand your search. For example, I want to find out aging population in Singapore. I have two search variables there, aging population, Singapore. So what I need to type in is a N command, A and D, and I type in Singapore in this case. And what you're trying to tell the database is that you want to get search results where the terms aging population and Singapore appears in the same article. I'm going to hit the search button. All right, and what follows after is it will give me all my search results. I have 69,000 in total. All right, so now the results have been narrowed down to about 57,000. And what I will do now is select my source type. Now for students, I will recommend all of you to stick to scholarly journals at most. You don't want to dive in too deep, you know, into the thesis papers. That is not really required. So I'll just click on scholarly journals for now. Once I'm in, you can see that I can start browsing through my search results and I got some very good entries here. All right, I'll click on the first one, Singapore's aging population from an Asian bioethics review, for example. You can see that by default, very conveniently, I have the PDF article of the entire paper, which I can actually save into my desktop as well. Now at the top right hand corner of the screen, you can actually see various user options. You can download the PDF of the article, keep a backup copy just in case your teacher or your lecturer wants to refer to the paper itself. All right. And most importantly, you can cite the article by clicking on the cite button over here, an automatic citation window appears. You can actually copy and paste the citation format into your references section of your assignment. Now, the default is AMA in this case, but you can actually switch your citation format to any one of your choice or whichever one your school uses. For example, I have APA, I have uh, Chicago, I also have um, Harvard. So just pick your respective uh, citation of choice, all right? And then it will change it accordingly and you can then copy and paste this into your references section. Very useful. Now, one quick tip for everyone, if you're referring to any academic journal, uh, they could be 20 pages long and too much information for us to digest. What I like to do is to look at the abstract, all right, which is lo usually located in either the first or the second page of any paper. Now, over here, you can see that from this paper, I can read about the background, the methods, the results, the conclusions. I actually like to take the conclusions of the abstract and link it to my school assignment to give it that relevance to establish the link and let my lecturers and all my teachers know that I've done the background research.
The third and last database we'll introduce is EBSCOhost databases. It contains academic journals and thesis papers just like ProQuest. We're simply introducing you to an alternative brand in case you want to find you know, different search results as well. So let's get into it. All right, so in order to find EBSCOhost, I go under E in the eResources tab. And you can see that there are various EBSCOhost titles as well you will want to find EBSCOhost Research Databases. So this is the all-in-one. On the next screen, you want to click on Select All and click Continue. So once you arrive on the EBSCOhost main page, you will notice that there are three search bars instead of just one. And the good news is that the second and the third search bars are already separated by the end command. In other words, you can actually type in your search term into each of those boxes without having to type in the end command. Very convenient. I'm going to type in aging population into the first one and then Singapore into the second one. So the results list is pretty similar to ProQuest as well. On the left-hand side of the screen, you have the filtering column showing you the source types. The calendar is higher up, so you can actually start to limit your results to maybe the last five years. And then finally, you can then select your source types. All right, in this case, I'm gonna go for academic journals. And then you can start to browse through the different search results. So once you enter a search result of a choice, you can see that you have the options to download the PDF on the left-hand side of the screen over here and the citation button is located on the right-hand side of the screen. So the citations window will appear. In this option, you simply have to scroll down until you find the respective citation format that your school uses. All right, for example, APA is over here. You can highlight it and copy and paste it into my references section. And that concludes the sharing on the NLB e-resources. For more information, do head on down to our Shure website at shure.nlb.gov.sg. You can find more information by going to the Resources tab and selecting Post-Secondary Level. So in our Resources page, you can actually find all of our other infographic pieces which are free and available for you to download from. Thank you very much for viewing this e-lecture. We would like to gather your feedback on what you think about our series and what can be improved. Simply click on the link over here. Thank you and goodbye.